So today I will be talking about uh, log parsing using open telemetry and Cygnos. So I'm uh, Nityananda Gohai. I work at uh, Cygnos as a software engineer. Yeah, so this will be a short talk. So let's start. So let's uh, get an introduction on open telemetry. So open telemetry basically helps you uh, basically helps you to collect application metrics and then analyze those uh, perform those to check the performance of your applications. So what it helps is, let's say you have applications, you can use open telemetry to collect the telemetry data by instrumenting your application, and then after collecting the data, you can use different processors uh, provided by open telemetry to process your data, and then you can export it to any destination. So this is a vendor neutral thing, so it doesn't restrict you to a single thing. And then you can export it to like Cygnos or any other uh, place that you want, like Elasticsearch, wherever you can, you want to visualize your data. So in this talk, we'll be mostly focusing on talk uh, logs. So logs are nothing but chronolog chronological uh, events. Uh, yeah. Now, open telemetry provides various receivers, processors, and exporters for logs. By receivers, you mean, uh, like, let's say your application in, uh, is running on Kubernetes. Now, you want to collect those logs from Kubernetes. Or your application is running on directly on a VM. Now, in that case, you might want to collect those logs from there. So, open telemetry provides various receivers to collect those logs. And then you have various processors. Let's say you are collecting logs from Kubernetes. And then you might want to change how it is uh, structured. So in that case, you will need processors. And then you have the exporters that you need to export those logs. Now, Open Telemetry also provides a standard log data model. So here you can see these are the various fields provided by Open Telemetry uh, for the log. Now, what happens is, let's say you are collecting your syslogs. Now, you'll need some processors to basically map your log current structure to this Open Telemetry logs. So in this way, all your logs can be standardized to a single format. Now here I've taken two simple examples. Like one is a Nginx logs. Uh, I think it's not that visible, but yeah, one is a Nginx log and one is your application log. So Nginx, you can see there are various components to it. One is the host and the timestamp and other stuff in the log line. And the application log, you have just a JSON structured log and then you have various components to it, like the timestamp, the service, the status, the method and other stuff. Now the thing is that you need to convert this uh, log line to a structure that is supported by Open Telemetry so that you can export it to any kind of uh, destination that you want. Now, how will you do this usually is Open Telemetry provides a way to write configurations where you can basically parse these log lines. So, Open Telemetry provides various kinds of uh, like, uh, like operators like uh, reject parser, JSON parser, and a router. So basically with this, what you can do is you can write various configurations which will parse your log lines. Now here is an example uh, config for parsing this uh, Nginx log. So here we have a router which basically says that anything that is coming from uh, any logs that is uh, having a source Nginx, you will pass to this Nginx parser. And in this Nginx parser, what we are doing is we are writing a regex, which is basically uh, extracting different uh, attributes out of this log line. So you can see uh, where you have the remote address, remote user, time local. So these are different attributes that will be extracted from the log line. Now let's go to the next slide. So here we are parsing the JSON logs. And this is also not that visible, but yeah. So here also what we are doing is, we are saying that uh, if any logs that has a source of application, it will be passed to the JSON parser. And in this JSON parser, what we are doing is, we are parsing those uh, log line and then extracting various attributes. Like we are moving service, we are moving the method out of uh, the log line, we are also moving the body out of the log line. Now this will be more clear once we uh, see, like visualize it. So let's see like how it actually works in uh, this thing in the UI.
Yeah, so this is the this is the log space of Signos. So right now I don't have any log lines. So what I will do is I will uh, let's go back. So this is the configuration that I have. So I have uh, two receivers. That is uh, one is Nginx and one is file log, and it is reading two files. And then here I've added two attributes. That is uh, Nginx source and then Nginx uh, app. Yeah. And then what I'm doing is I'm exporting this uh, logs data from both the sources, that is the receivers, and then exporting into ClickHouse. So once I do that, now these are the raw log lines, which are without any transformation, where I'm just exporting it. So in this case, I'll just forward it. So in this case, we can see that our entire log is uh, extracted to the body. And then these uh, fields are present inside the body itself, but which is not the case that we want, because this is the generated by the source, and we want to extract different things out of it. So if we go forward, same for Nginx. So in Nginx, the entire log line is uh, mapped to the body. We might want to extract different things out of it. So. So let me go back to the configuration file. So here I will enable the processors. Now let me, yeah. So this is the first processor that I've written. So the one that I shown in the previous slide. So in this case, what I'm doing is, I'm just uh, saying that for Nginx, this is the regex parser, and you need to uh, parse and extract these attributes. And the same goes for uh, application. So here I'm uh, using the JSON parser and then extracting different attributes out of it. Now once I do that, you can see these, uh, these two are my previous log lines and these two are the new log lines that were ingested. Now, if I expand the previous log line, we can see everything was present inside the body. Now, with the new log line, you can see all the attributes are extracted here. Now, what I where is this helpful is basically you can use defined kind of indexing after the attributes are parsed, and your queries will be faster. You can also create dashboards after you have successfully parsed your attributes. So same goes for Nginx. So if we see the new logs, so you can see all the attributes are extracted here. And then you can create different dashboards out of it. So as you've seen, so when you are writing these configurations, it is very difficult because you need to connect different sources locally and you, te you need to test it out again and again to get a like proper configuration setup. So the main issue that we've faced with our users is, so basically they use our platform, they come, they connect different sources. The DevOps engineer will say that, okay, I've connected all my sources. Now these logs are not parsed. Now let's say a company with like 10 microservices comes in with different databases and different uh, services that are using. Now what happens is like they cannot talk to each developer and ask for a configuration again, get the configuration deployed and then get the parsing up and running. And there are also a lot of trials and errors to get the parsing right. So this is the issue that we have seen like with most of our users and that's why uh, so we have a better way to do this. Now writing configuration files is very difficult and testing it on the production is also very difficult because let's say you're deploying it on Kubernetes, then in that case, like all of your developers need to have access and then you have to send the data locally. So it's very difficult. Now, what is a better way? So uh, about Signos, so it's an open source project that we have and it has 15K plus GitHub stars and we have more than 3,400 uh, members on the Slack community. So it's a open source observability platform. So you can export all your telemetry data to Signos, and then we, we can help uh, visualize those, da those data and then you can generate various, uh, basically see what the performance of your application is. Now here I will be talking about like basically how you can create pipelines directly from the UI, how you can test the, those pipelines directly from the UI and then uh, basically here you don't need any local setup. You can directly test it on your production and once you uh, test it properly and then deploy it, it will be deployed directly to your production cluster. 
so how it's done for so let's the take the same exam for J, example for json so so this is the same example that we had so we had uh, just two attributes and the entire log was present inside the body field now we'll be using the ui of pipelines to parse and extract the different attributes out of this log line so this is the pipelines page now i'll be creating a new pipeline And then here I'll be selecting the source of the logs. So this is application logs. Now I'll create the pipeline. Now once the pipeline is created, we can add different pro uh, processors to those pipelines. So here what I've done is I've selected a uh, filter source equal to application. Now this will filter out all the logs and pass it to this uh, pipeline. And here I'll be using a JSON parser to parse those application logs. So I'll be passing it from the body and then moving it to attributes.temp. Now we can simulate this, uh, this on the go. So here we haven't deployed. Now we are simulating this pipeline directly on the UI. And then we can see the result as well. So once I uh, simulated it, so I added uh, basically JSON parser and parsed the entire output to a temp variable. So you can see the temp data is present here. So now I'll be adding more uh, processors to the pipeline. So one is the move service name. Let me forward it a bit. And then I'll also move the method from uh, that JSON file. Now here also we can simulate the current uh, logic, and then we can see that the various attributes are parsed, and then uh, they are present here. I'll just forward this. Now at the end, we also need to remove the temporary variable that we created. Now once this is done, so all our attributes are parsed. Now you want to move the body to the body field. We don't want to keep this stuff here, like method, status, uh, service. We just want to keep body in the body. So we'll do the move operator on body. So here I'm moving from attributes.tem.body to body. So Finally, we have seen that uh, this thing, our logs are parsed properly, and then we can see on the UI itself how it will look like. Now, once we save our configuration and then go back to our UI, we can see all the new logs that are getting ingested will be parsed automatically. So this helps you, like, basically helps developers not to de uh, depend on the DevOps engineers to deploy their config files and also change their configuration for logs parsing. Yeah, same goes for uh, Nginx logs. Now, how does this work? So basically, we have a Signos uh, backend service, and it has a pipeline preview package. Now, anything that you run on the preview, it runs on the query service itself. And then we have the different OTL collectors. Now, these OTL collectors uh, connect to Signos query service via WebSocket. Now, any change that you apply on the configuration, it is passed to the OTL collectors, and OTL collector is running on something known as OPAMP, which helps you redeploy your OTL collector without basically shutting it down and then applying a new configuration. So once you apply a configuration, your configuration will be passed to all the hotel collectors, and they will get the new configuration. So the main hotel collector will shut down, but the entire process won't shut down. So there is another process which is running the hotel collector. So that will get the new config. It will shut down the uh, collector uh, process, and it will restart the collector with the new config. So that's how like we basically manage it. So there are various caveats to it as well. like. Um, we are facing right now, like uh, figuring out how to deploy it in uh, like different uh, systems, but yeah.
So you can use this right now on, uh, by downloading the uh, signals on uh, GitHub and then using it locally. Yeah, thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask me now or later as well.